What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for the first video behind the wheel of our 2022 Mach-E. And so in this video, I just wanted to go over the process of what it took to get this vehicle. We ordered it. We didn't just go buy one off the lot because mostly because there's just these huge markups and everything, but also we wanted a very specific combo that wasn't super common. So we decided to order the Mach-E. Um, and so I just wanted to do this video as a warning as far as what to expect, at least here in 2022, if you're ordering a Mach-E as far as wait times and and the roller coaster of emotions that you go through ordering this vehicle. Um, it was a really a pain in the butt. It was a huge headache for, you know, it was about a 10 month process for us to get this vehicle. We ordered it on October 1st of 2021 and we took delivery on July 28th of 2022 here. It's just a, about 10 days ago we've had this vehicle now. Um, and so I just wanted to warn people because, you know, I went into this myself thinking it wouldn't be too bad, it wouldn't be too long. Even Ford's own estimates were suggesting the car should be arriving around March or April. And here we are, you know, the end of July before it actually does show up. And so um, it's just, it was a lot and um, I wanted to give a couple disclaimers on this video as well. So first, um, I just have to say that it's nice, one, that Ford even lets you order a car. Um, so, you know, before I get, really get into all my frustrations with the ordering experience, the fact you can even order is nice because a lot of other vehicles out there these days, there is no ordering. It's just, you call your dealer, the dealer has no control over what they can even get. They're just like, this is what the company is sending us and that's it. So, you know, again, this is a first world problem. I mean, it's a first world problem in general, boo hoo. It took me 10 months to get my $50,000 electric car. Um, you know, but also just as far as, you know, a lot of other companies don't even give you the option to order at all. And you're stuck just waiting around hoping that you get lucky enough to get the combo you're looking for or you're flexible enough to just take whatever gets shipped to the dealer. So Ford is already leagues ahead of a lot of others just for that fact alone. On top of that, you know, I also have to really say that it's nice that Ford gives us as much tracking information as they do because a lot of others that even do let you order, there's no tracking whatsoever. You have no clue what's going on with the vehicle. You know, it's a complete, you know, just uh, walking in the dark experience until it finally shows up for a lot of these other companies. So. Um, you know, it's really, really nice that Ford gives you all the extra information they do give you, but that information is both a blessing and a curse, um, depending on, you know, how things play out for you. Now, I will also say that my experience isn't going to be everyone's experience either. There was, uh, some people that, you know, waltzed into their Ford dealer because they were bored one Saturday and they placed an order willy nilly for a car and it showed up two months later and they're like, oh cool, I had a great experience. Um, unfortunately there's a lot of other people that end up waiting over a year for their car so I also don't have the worst experience there's some people that are now just getting scheduled to be produced at the end of August that were also October 1st orders and they'll you know probably end up getting their vehicle about exactly a year away there's even one person I just saw that was getting a 2021 Mach-E which those ended production at the end of last year they had chip holds or something and they didn't even get delivery of their 2021 until here over halfway through 2022 so I certainly didn't have the worst experience there are some real real horror stories out there um, but what I found is that my experience is fairly average as far as the wait times and the amount of fiascos that I did end up going through um, so not the worst not the best uh, you know but it was definitely maddening the way Ford went about some of the things because of the amount of transparency but also the lack of transparency at the same time so I'm gonna get into all that here in this video I just wanted to give those first few disclaimers that you know at least Ford you know gives you the amount of tracking that they do now as far as the order, we ordered on October 1st. That was the very first day you could place an order for a 2022 model year vehicle. That's why we waited until then. We were pretty convinced we were going to take delivery of it, and that was the plan was to get the Mach-E, but we still were keeping our options open, possibly because, you know, of these nightmares we've been hearing about with ordering and, you know, chip hold, holds and shortages and all these issues. Um, and uh, that's also playing a factor in why it took this vehicle so long to show up. There were some part shortages, which I'll get into here in a second. But, um, you know, so there's a bunch of stuff going on. Some of that stuff also wasn't Ford's fault. I'll explain some of that here later on as well. But it just the fact is, you know, it took a while. But so anyway, October 1st, we ordered. Um, and probably the most agonizing part of the wait in many ways was the first six months when it was radio silence. We placed the order in October, heard nothing until April. Um, April 7th is when we finally got scheduled for production. Uh, so from October till April, nothing. No emails from Ford saying, hey, stay tuned or anything about like, you know, hold tight, it's gonna be scheduled soon. There was no info. And to make matters worse, uh, the Mach-E forums, I was on these forums a lot 
lot, um, just reading everyone else's experiences and just kind of gauging a barometer of, you know, is my experience that's happening currently, is this normal, is this fair, is this, you know, um, you know, logical? And, um, you know, for again, it was a, a wide array where there were some people that had worse luck than I did and other people that had much better luck than I did. But it was just tough to see that, you know, like in February, I was sitting there still twiddling my thumbs like, you know, what's going on with this car? And yet there was other people that were like, oh yeah, I placed an order in January and I just got scheduled here in the middle of February. And it that kind of stuff just really is maddening and doesn't provide a feel good experience. You know, it's it'd be one thing if, you know, we all were waiting and there was part shortages, but you know, everything got built in order and, you know, it was all orderly and fair, but that's not the case. You know, Ford, like anyone else, you know, they have supply chains and they want to keep those chains going. They want to keep the production line going. So they're going to build whatever they have the parts to build. And so what I was seeing, you know, in late uh, winter into early spring was that for some reason there seemed to be a part shortage on the glass roofs because the stuff that was getting built the fastest were selects and GTs without the glass roof. Now GT is obviously going to be the priority probably because it's highest profit margins for Ford. I can understand that, sure. And so, you know, there's a lot of people though that ordered the base selects, which I would assume is probably the least amount of uh, profit for Ford. And those were getting built super fast on top of the fact that that there was tons of selects already sitting on dealer lots. If you look on Auto Trade or anywhere else and look and see what dealer stock is available for Mach E's, generally it's going to just be a ton of selects that nobody wants because everyone wants the premium. That's the one that's ordered the most, and that's part of why it took this car so long to arrive. It's because we ordered the premium and we got the all wheel drive. Uh, but we did get the smaller battery, which I thought would kind of help me at least a little bit with the order. Unfortunately, it didn't, um, and it took just as long as it took people with the bigger batteries to get their cars. But anyway, so you know. I kind of discerned through the forums and you know it wasn't just me it was a bunch of us all working together trying to figure out you know why our, our car is not getting built and you know but it would have been nice if Ford was just like hey look we only have so many glass roofs we're not able to build very many of the premiums uh, or we don't have the chips to build the premiums or whatever the case might be if there was some kind of transparency or some kind of explanation as far as why we were waiting instead of just blind faith that Ford was hopefully working in our favor to get us our car as fast as possible um, you know it just would have been nice to have some type of you know thing instead of radio silence for six months I mean that's you know especially for me it was a little more anxiety inducing because our whole situation was Beth's lease was up on her Mercedes uh, at the end of April and we were able to extend it out a max of two months or potentially you know buy it out it turned out the buyout thing didn't work out in our favor because used car prices even for her Mercedes um, in this crazy hot market the Mercedes just did not hold its value and was basically worth the buyout price but no more and after sales tax and everything I would have been upside down so I didn't buy out the Mercedes that wasn't going to be part of the plan so it was like all right well we'll extend it out two months if we need to but then you know we had a hard deadline of like by the end of June she will be out of a car um, and thankfully I have press vehicles and you know there was other things we could borrow family vehicles and stuff like that but it still would have just been you know kind of a headache to not have a car after the end of June so you know not hearing anything for six months. I'm starting to get a little nervous by the middle of February and I actually start considering like, should I just buy one off the lot? Because I'm reading everyone else's horror stories, people saying that they've already been waiting a year for their car and all this stuff and I was like, you know, maybe I should just go ahead and order one I, or, you know, buy one off the lot and, you know, give up on this order. Um, the only thing is, you know, most of the ones on the lots, very few dealers are offering them at MSRP and it would be a long road trip and stuff. And so I wasn't opposed to the road trip, but I just was like, you know what? You know, Ford originally said it should be here sometime you know, around March or April. My dealer said that that should be my expected window as well. Everyone seemed to you know, think like, you know, just keep the faith. It's going to, you know, hopefully be here in time. And I thought, okay, I have potentially till the end of June anyway. I have some time. I'll just roll the dice and hope for the best. And so stuck with the order. And again, from, and that was late winter, I was really contemplating seriously just buying, because I found a couple within about 500 miles that were, you know, the same spec that what we wanted here. Uh, but I was also, you know, looking forward to getting a 2022, because we wanted to get the second model year to hopefully have a few less bugs. And also, you know, once I knew that we weren't going to get built super early, I was like, okay, well now if I play my cards right, I can maybe get a job to 2022, which is like a 2022 and a half, you know, as far as, you know, the parts and all that stuff goes. And so I was hoping that, you know, okay, well, that would have even less bugs and it would be all good so anyway stuck with the order and finally again no warning no heads up or anything just on april 7th it was like 
we scheduled your mock -E. it's gonna be built the week of May 9th. I'm like, sweet, all right, well, sounds good. I've heard typically six to eight weeks for from production to delivery to the dealer. So I'm like, all right, well, if it gets built very beginning of May, we could you know, make it just in time here for the end of June and everything will be okay. But before we go further, I also have to mention one other shortcoming from Ford's end is that um, they basically did finally come out and say, look, we have a shortage of chips. We're going to be cutting back. And so the 2022s, at least from job two, uh, the ones built after you know May, um, they were going to not have the kick to open tailgate feature, which this car does not have. And also they wouldn't have um, the auto park thing. So it'll do the automatic parallel parking. That was getting pulled as well. Um, and you can add those things on later. But in the meantime, they're gonna give you a $325 discount for not having um, the auto park feature. But the dealer had to go in and manually hit accept and change that, um, that package and add on an active park assist prep kit um, to then make your order eligible to be scheduled. Um, and a lot of dealers didn't even know this. There wasn't communicated to them clearly enough. Um, and so there's a lot of other people. Thankfully, I was on my dealer to make sure and I was on the forum so I knew all this stuff. But if you were a casual person that you know wasn't OCD about this stuff like I was, you would have completely missed out on it. And there was several people that like had their orders just sitting on the wait pile for you know a month or two because they had no clue. And then they like come on the forums and they're like, oh wait, like my dealer's saying I, you know, we, they just are figuring this stuff out and then it's like they needlessly waited for months um, when they should have had their car scheduled because there was just a lack of communication there. But that's one of the other areas where that mach -E forum was so valuable. And that was one of the real big perk of the mach -E to me in particular was the fact that there's a really strong community for them and uh, there's just uh, so much interactivity on the forum and so much great information and so many forum members that are so happy to help and uh, just they go above and beyond the call of duty to help out you know uh, mo uh, fellow Maki -E owners and you know keep everyone informed and in the loop and so that community really is an awesome thing which I think is kind of blended over from the regular Mustang community but also just uh, I don't know there's just a lot of passion around the Maki, -E, and so thankfully there's a really good community that was able to keep me and everyone else in the loop about all this stuff otherwise I would have been in the dark about it as well um, so anyway getting back to the timeline here so the car gets scheduled for May 9th production May 9th, uh, or maybe a week or so before, it gets pushed back, now it's May 16th. And then it gets pushed back the next week to May 23rd. So I'm like, okay, great. Well, now it's almost certainly not going to show up in time and Beth will be without a car for some period of time. Um, and so that was really frustrating every one of those weeks. Where I'm like, okay, it's gonna get built this week. And they're like, nope, another week, nope, another week. And I like, keep pushing it back. And again, no explanation whatsoever. If they were like, hey, there's an issue. Here's why we can't build your car. We're really sorry. We'll get to it as fast as we possibly can. Like I would have been so much more patient if I would have had a little bit of information about why there was delays instead of either finding them out after the fact, after I had already banged my head against the wall or, you know, just, just something to kind of help out. And that's why, <laughs> You know, the overarching theme of this is do not order one of these unless you have an extreme amount of patience um, or you just are really laid back. You don't care about when it shows up and there's no time constraints for you whatsoever. Otherwise, go hunt one down on a lot, save yourself a headache, and that's, you know, you'll just, you'll be happy you didn't wait around for 10 months or more or less. You know, it's just, it's a little bit of a stressful thing still. But anyway, so. May 23rd, the week of May 23rd comes around, um, the car uh starts there's a few people in that build group so i was in a later batch of that week's build group so there's batches in each build group and there's like four or five batches for each week and so a few of the earlier batches had started production i'm like sweet okay things are moving finally instead of this endless delay and pushback so they were starting to you know build our production week and then may 27th um it showed that my car had started production and my dealer got some kind of info saying that the car had either started production or was already produced uh, but then later he said that it was on the trim line um, so they don't have great information either and this is why all of my complaints with this whole ordering process nothing is the dealer's fault the dealer was great to work with they were just as out of the loop as I was unfortunately they didn't get any extra info really beyond what I was able to access through the Ford chat support uh, stuff and just my own uh, detective work so you know it just it was unfortunate the dealer couldn't help me more but none of this is the dealer's fault because again Ford doesn't really help them out much either so that is what it is but anyway 
So May 27th, it seems like the car has started production. I'm like, okay, cool. And I got an email from Ford saying, your car is in production, hooray. And that's all great and you know, all exciting. And I'm like, all right, things are moving. We're gonna have some progress here. And you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And so um, that's great. And then another surprise that I didn't want to have is um, you know, they say it takes maybe like three to four days tops to you know, from start to end of production. So you know, I was expecting stuff that was, you know, like a Friday, I think. So I was like, okay, over the weekend, maybe they don't work or it's, you know, uh, a little bit slower or something. I'll give it until the middle of next week and hopefully I'll hear something. Next week goes by, there's nothing, no update. It still says it's in production. Um, another week goes by, absolutely nothing. So now I'm going on in two weeks when it's normally supposed to take three to four days and there's no information. My car is just sitting on the line, supposedly somewhere in pieces and I have no clue why. Um, and then almost a third week goes by, it's about two and a half weeks, and then finally the news comes out that there was a massive recall for the high voltage battery junction box, which has been leaving uh, several people stranded. I think it's in the, the numbers around a couple hundred, I don't know the exact count currently, but last I saw, I think it was over 200 or so, um, that all oh, just like, were leaving people stranded. And so, the theory, and again, Ford has never told us why the production line was actually halted for three weeks. Like, not only was my car not getting built, everyone else in my batch wasn't getting built, and the following production weeks, the five, the May 30th production week, the lack, there was an actual, supposed to be a, a first week of uh, June uh, production week, that just ended up vanishing, and those people all got pushed to like a, a June 13th build week, and then there's, uh, it just kept getting pushed back and back, so all, none of these people were getting built, so the line was idled for multiple weeks, and we're all trying to figure out what's going on, and then the news comes out of this recall and we're like okay well that makes sense again but no one ever told us this we just figured it out because the may they said the recall is for vehicles that were built before i think may 24th so it's like okay so everyone in our build week you know there was like split the early ones that kind of you know got built the beginning of that week and got shipped out right away those ones actually did end up falling under the recall but thankfully mine started after that date and didn't actually complete until after that date and i'll get into that in a second um because of that it was uh you know my car dodged that but thankfully you know ford said that it's just a software update at least for the cars that are already out there they're just uh, they know that this part is essentially under engineered especially for gts that can't handle the higher a thermal load of that junction box it just it just uh, welds itself open or shut and then causes the car to go into limp mode or just causes it to not be able to start at all and just be bricked essentially so um, you know it's it's a very serious issue and I'm glad that they took the steps to recall it and stuff it would have been nice if they actually just did a recall and replaced everyone's parts instead of just being like hey like they basically just put out software that limits the car and puts it into an extended limp mode once it detects that your junction box is starting to fail so that it prevents it from fully failing so you don't get stranded anymore which is a huge improvement still I will give Ford credit for that um, at least you're not getting stranded anymore but it does mean you're in limp mode until you take it to the dealer but at least you can drive to the dealer under your own power but anyway so um, that was you know just something that was kind of crazy that you know they that I'm like great well at least I dodged a bullet there I don't have to worry about you know having a vehicle that's going to have a problematic part and I know I don't have to worry about this limp software because I have hopefully the mo more robust part. It turns out, again, thanks to forum members, we found out there's a new part number and that uh, you know most likely vehicles that were built after that date will probably have that new part. Now, I can't confirm without dropping the battery pack and digging into that box as far as whether or not I do have the new part, but I believe that I do. It would be really nice if Ford would say, but again, lack of communication here and smoke and mirrors and trying to, you know, I don't know if they're just, you know, just trying to minimize the news story or what but whatever you know it just was lack of information and again we had to figure out ourselves on the forum until this recall happened about why we were just sitting on the production line for three weeks with no you know no movement whatsoever so anyway the final uh thing was that because of that delay here my car didn't actually markets it, then the Ford tracker which you can use the track and it'll tell you updates very limited updates but every once in a while when there's something big that happens it'll tell you an update it said that it had um, gone into production actually in fact on June 12th and finished production on June 13th then it was a really quick turnaround because I think it's towards the end of June 13th because it actually shipped out right away on June 15th so that was I was really happy about that I'm like all right sweet well it took you know three weeks but if the delay was because I now have a better part and I don't have to worry about getting stranded 
great. Like it was worth it, even though I was pulling my hair out for three weeks straight trying to figure out what's going on. Like at least I now know the weight was worth it. It wasn't just for some dumb chip hold or some other thing that doesn't really benefit me. At least I'm hopefully coming out ahead with this delay and having this more robust part hopefully. So, you know, I wasn't mad about it after the fact. I'm like, okay, sweet. Well, I got the better part, it's worth it. But I just wish I would have known that my weight was worth it ahead of time um, before, you know, I just was going crazy <laughs> and driving myself nuts. But um, so anyway, at that time, um, Ford did give me an estimated arrival date of between July 22nd to July 28th, which, you know, at that point I'm like, all right, well, at least the thing's, you know, getting built. But I mean, I'd already given up hope on the vehicle actually showing up on time at that point anyway, but I was also too, I was in too deep to, you know, bail on the order. I'm like, all right, well, I'm close enough now. Like, you know, I might as well just stick with it. There's no point in going out and rushing and buying another Mach-E. You know, I'll just, we'll deal with not having a car, you know, for however many weeks and hopefully, you know, still again, hope for the best, hope everything would go smoothly. Um, I should have known it wouldn't have gone smoothly, but it just, you know, I was hoping for the best. So anyway, um, you know, that was the window is 722 to 728. So, um, ships out on the si on uh, June uh, 15th and then um, I'm able to track it thankfully by train um, so one of the really great things is with the Ford uh, chat support uh, thing they actually if you ask the right questions you get a lot of information out of them uh, it's still a little delayed so it's not amazing but it's still again a whole lot better than nothing so they're able to actually give me the rail car number so you're able to go and then go on the automated uh, phone system for that rail car company and uh, track that rail car which is really nice you can do that so it'll give you an update at every uh, location or every stop that it stops at there and so I was able to track it and see that it actually got to uh, Kansas City in about 12 days from Mexico which I thought was actually pretty good I was pretty happy with that the train was moving pretty fast and I'm like sweet and I was actually seeing on the forums as well there's a lot of people getting their cars two to three two to three weeks before um, their actual estimated delivery window there so I'm like oh cool well, maybe we won't actually be without a car for very long you know maybe a week or so tops and it'll be great so June 27th gets to Kansas City and I'm hoping you know it's supposed to take another train to go to uh, you know the rest of the way all the way to Ohio to my dealer um, and so you know there have been some people that have been saying it takes about a week or so for it to transfer trains and I'm like well hopefully it's quicker some people it did happen quicker but for me unfortunately it was radio silence for 10 days um, and meanwhile you know we turned in Beth's car on June 30th so every day it was passing by was another day where she didn't have a car now thankfully I review cars for a living I have press vehicles that are loaned to me most every week. We were able to have a car most weeks, but there was one week where we actually did have to borrow a car from a family member because I didn't have a press car scheduled that week. So it was starting to get more stressful with this weight, especially considering at this point I knew that there was no good reason. The car was just sitting around in a lot in Kansas City for 10 days. Now I know that there's logistics to be considered and you know they're not going to ship cars on empty rail cars. You know they need to make sure there's enough cars that are there to you know put into the rail car. They're not going to send a truck that's half empty in order to you know send it over to the rail yard either so you know there's things that I understand there's some good reasons for some of these delays it's just unfortunate that un my luck was such that you know I wasn't you know able to hop on a truck at the last minute and hop onto the train at the last minute I still had to sit around in lots for you know a bunch of time before I was actually able to move to the next step but anyway 10 days later it gets on another train so I believe I got that info on July tw on July 8th that it was uh, loaded onto the next train and was on its way to Ohio and and it got there pretty quickly for a train. I think it would actually it landed it in the uh, drop-off point in Ohio for my dealer and all the surrounding dealers in that area at Avon Lake, Ohio on July 12th. And so I'm like, all right, sweet. Well, it's now 80 miles away from the dealer. You know, it's, yeah, you know, we're, uh, you know, a couple of weeks before the ETA, but I was like, you know, we're hopefully going to, you know, have the vehicle show up early. And this is great. Nice little acceleration here. Um, <laughs> this thing is really nice to drive, by the way, you know, that's, I'll get to that towards the end, but you know, it is really enjoyable and I'm glad we stuck with the order. But anyway, um, so, you know, the 12th of July is when it shows up in Avon Lake, Ohio, and then more radio silence and more of no explanations as far as what's going on. So it sits there, it sits there, um, and I'm like starting to wonder, I'm hearing stuff about you know, trucker shortages and I'm like man like I really hope this car doesn't get stuck here in the meantime um, you know and this is also it wasn't again a problem unique to me my dealer said there is other people that were waiting on other vehicles even like f-150s um, there's one guy that apparently had ordered an f-150 and planned his entire vacation around being able to 
toe with his F-150 and he was potentially having to walk away from his order because his car was sitting also 80 miles away from the dealer um, and it was just stuck there and hadn't been moving for weeks. Um, and the crazy thing is the dealer, at least my dealer, had the uh, option to request a uh, delivery driver, like a dealer trade driver, to go pick it up from the lot and drive it to the dealer if they can't figure out how to get a truck to drive it to us. Um, and so the dealer actually submitted requests for three prior vehicles that were waiting there even longer than I was. Um, and all three of those requests got denied for some reason. I don't know if it's because the cars were already loaded onto a trailer and they didn't want to offload them because it seemed like cars um, had been uh, being put on trailers but were just waiting because I did get an update on uh, the 19th so a week after essentially saying the car had finally gotten off of the train and had been um, received by the carrier um, meaning that it was hopefully you know either sitting on a ramp somewhere or that it was actually you know, loaded onto a trailer and this is another example where um, the Mach-E form is really awesome because I have to give a shout out to Renton777 who actually lived near Avon Lake and um, was nice enough. He also was waiting for his vehicle that um, was a few weeks behind mine but he was also curious as well. But he actually went to the lot where these vehicles are kept. Um, you know, obviously he wasn't able to get in but you know, looking through the fence there he was actually able to snap a picture and there was a Mach-E, it was a grabber blue one, wasn't mine, but there was a Mach-E on a trailer. All the pieces seemed to be there for the most part aside from the driver um I know there's driver shortages and you know the gas prices and stuff. There's good reasons for you know some of that I'm sure as well. But it just would have been nice to have some communication of hey we're not gonna be able to get a driver for another week and a half just letting you know, or hey, you know, we're struggling to get drivers, we're gonna even just say we'll work on it, we're trying to get it, you know, soon. But again, there was just radio silence instead and me having to, you know, sit here and, you know, try and look into a crystal ball to figure out what's going on with my car. And then I was stressed out because like there was a hailstorm that went through there, so I'm like, great, my car's sitting on some open trailer, probably getting hailed on and <laughs> everything else. Thankfully the car seems to be unscathed and totally fine. But you know, it's just it's just all these agonizing things while you're waiting for this stuff, especially again because we're without a car and you know we've been waiting almost 10 months already. Our patience is already very thin at this point. You know, and it's just also again, other people were getting their cars delivered without these long waits. Again, if everyone had to wait, you know, a standard three weeks in a parking lot until their driver came and picked up their car in a truck, fine. But it just that wasn't consistent. So I'm sitting on the forums while other people in my build week that are getting their cars delivered to Northern California, to Seattle, to Florida, every corner of the United States was getting these cars delivered, no problem whatsoever, but yet my car can't make it from Kansas City to Ohio in less time. I mean, it got to Ohio, but by the time I took delivery of it, it took longer for, to go from Kansas City to my doorstep than it took to go from Mexico uh, all the way to Kansas City. It's just, it's crazy that it just, you know, struggled so much in those last few weeks that really dropped the ball when it could have actually been ahead of schedule, could have really, you know, been worked out a lot better, you know, but instead, um, you know, again, it's radio silence again, and then I'm entering my build week. And so the build week, you know, July 22nd to the 28th is when the ETA of, you know, my expected week of delivery. And so, you know, 20 second goes by, all these days go by, radio silence again, dealer doesn't know anything again, of course, because they're also kept out of the loop. And then the final day of my ETA, July 28th, um, the morning of, I log into my Ford account uh, to see the tracker, like I do every single day, multiple times a day, to, you know, see what, if there's any kind of status updates. Um, on the morning of the 28th, it said, your vehicle is now pushed back, it'll be delivered sometime between July 31st and August 6th. I'm like, great. Well, now we're going to have more and more delays while this car I know is sitting 80 miles away from my dealer for no good reason, <laughs> in my opinion, at least. And it's just maddening because I'm like, I wish I could go pick up the car. I would have gone and picked up the car back in Kansas City back at the end of June if I, you know, could have had the ability to. I would have gladly road tripped, you know, a few hundred miles to have my car a month sooner. Um, and so anyway... Uh, you know, it's just, I'm like, great. So the morning of the 28th, I'm like, well, we're going to be waiting at least another week here. And who knows, it could be just forever. Because there's some people that were waiting multiple months, you know, for in our same exact situation. So uh, wasn't happy about that. And then, you know, I don't know why I did. I just, I was obsessively checking the forward site, you know, multiple times a day, like I said. So I just happened to log back on right before lunch um, uh, that same morning. And sure enough, it said um, complete purchase, which on the Ford Tracker means your car has arrived at the dealer. Something I learned again from the forums. Um, and so I was like, 
whoa, like, that's a surprise. I mean, they originally said it would come by today, but it, you know, I just got the email pushback. So it was like a prime example of like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing within Ford's logistics system. And so I think that's also, I mean, again, that's kind of out of Ford's control as far as when the truckers do their thing and when the train does its thing. You know, once it leaves the factory, I guess you can't really blame Ford, although I wish their partners you know, that Ford would have a little more influence of being like, hey, like, we need to make sure these cars get picked up in a reasonable amount of time, but whatever. So anyway, um, you know, I get the info that uh, I call the dealer and they say, yep, your car literally just got dropped off 20 minutes ago. You can come pick it up, you know, later on this afternoon. And so it was a huge, huge uh, wave of relief. And, um, you know, so we ended up taking delivery later on in the evening there of uh, July 28th. And sure enough, it was the last day of the ETA. So it, to give Ford some more credit, the car did arrive within the ETA window that they predicted way back in May um, or the end, uh, middle of June, you know, whenever we finally had production happen. So, you know, it was accurate and so I can't blame them they delivered within the window window that they had actually promised me again the early window back in October was giving a very wide range and it was definitely late as far as that goes but as far as the actual specific here's what we're promising you they did deliver on that promised week so they redeemed themselves there just barely in the 11th hour of you know, the 28th you know they uh, came through for me here but um it just is unfortunate that, you know there's just a lot of delays and so to wrap all this up again i would just suggest if you don't have a ton of patience um then either stay off the forums and just completely forget you placed the order or um just go buy one on a lot it's worth hunting one down there are dealers that sell them at sticker price you can find a reasonable deal you don't have to pay a markup as long as you're willing to travel you know, a lot of people just want to have a super good deal, you know, five minutes away from their house. And that's not the case these days. You know, you're going to have to travel if you want a good deal for most people. And that's just the reality of the situation we're in. But if you're willing to put in the extra legwork of hunting down the car yourself, doing a road trip, you know, doing the legwork, making sure you're getting all the right deals and incentives and all that kind of stuff, you can come out with this, you know, for a good deal. I didn't pay a penny over sticker. The dealer I work with, Sarconi Ford um, in Alliance, Ohio, they were fantastic to work with. Very simple, straightforward. Before we actually had everything finalized before the car showed up because I was so antsy. So walked in, you know, signed a few papers and 10 minutes later I was done. And you know, so it was very great and they were so nice and patient with my pestering and with you know everything. They're so friendly and everything went so smoothly and the fact they held up to the deal because there's a lot of other horror stories of you know people waited all the time and went through all the stress like I did and then they got to the dealer and the dealer's like well if you don't pick up this car in 24 hours we're selling it to someone else or they just didn't tell people who maybe were either weren't able to get it right away or just still were able to actually get it right away but then they still had the car sold um, you know that same day that it arrived to somebody else and sold it out from underneath of them or you know people showed up um, like my buddy Pittsburgh views with his uh, Bronco where the dealer he waited a bunch of time for his Bronco to show up the Bronco showed up and a week before it showed up the dealer was like hey by the way you got to pay an extra 10 grand over sticker um, thankfully you know my dealer didn't play any of those games but you know that's not a guarantee with other four dealers so that's another reason why you know, you will definitely want to make sure you, you know, check out your Ford dealer ahead of time. Make sure that they are totally legit. You know, do some research online. Make sure that people haven't been burned by them in the past. But, you know, it just, it's another reason why, you know, if you just go in and just buy one off the lot, you save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of nail biting. Um, if you're not an anxious person <laughs> like me, then, you know, it'd probably be fine. And again, some people had good luck. They waltzed in, you know, in February, ordered a GT and walked out in April with it and it was no drama. So, you know, it's, it's all comes down to your personal luck, what exactly you order and all that. So, you know, again, I don't want to say this was a terrible experience all around. You know, I understand the realities of the situation we're in currently with chip shortages and everything else that's going on with gas prices and all that that fed into this. But again, just at the end of the day, I wish Ford would have given us the reasons behind these delays as they were happening, not after the fact or never in most cases. You know, I wish that we just had more transparency in that way. In my opinion, you know, I'm glad that I now have a car with a more robust part most likely if it wasn't for that recall and you know the fact that I'm probably I have the better you know car in a way if it wasn't for that I would have 100% regret ordering this car and I would have really really regretted not just going and buying one back in February whenever I was seriously considering it um, and you know hopefully the part is you know the better part but if you didn't get a better part you know I would say 100% I regret ever ordering this car it was way more of a headache than it was worth I'd much rather have just gone had immediate satisfaction and gratification of buying off a lot and 
immediately, having no stress, no nail biting, and uh, you know, save myself a whole lot of time on the computer doing all this research and stuff, and you know, stalking every uh, little movement of the car. Which again is my own fault for being so, you know, uh, crazy about it. But it's just. You know, whenever you're, you're, it's your purchase, you have a time crunch, you know, you, you want to know what's going on, you, you know, don't want to just be in the dark. So, you know, but anyway, so like the title suggests, you know, it was super stressful for me. I didn't enjoy the order experience. It wasn't fun. Would re not recommend uh, or ordering one of these right now until they get a lot of this stuff, you know, fixed or they improve their communication to at least keep people updated on what's going on and why, you know, what's happening is happening. Um, so, that's it. Uh, so hopefully that's the constructive, you know, for uh, those of you who are considering, you know, uh, purchasing one of these. Just keep that in mind. It's your experience may vary, but uh, chances are it's not going to be great. And this isn't just a mock -E thing either. Bronco orders have had a whole bunch of headaches, which have been covered a lot in the media and stuff. Mavericks have had a lot of weights. This is a, something that's happening a lot. Um, and it's, again, not just Ford either, but it's just very stressful to order a car right now in general uh, but I think that Ford could have made it a whole lot better if they would have communicated and um, and also they would just build stuff in order it doesn't make you feel good to you know know that there's people that waltzed in cut the line or even if it was because of you know the way the production line set up or the way that you know what they ordered it should just still to me it's only fair if they build stuff as it's ordered I know that probably doesn't make sense for logistically these days but it just again it just makes you feel terrible whenever you go on the forums and everyone's getting their cars before you are you know especially after after you've you waited longer than they have you know it just doesn't seem fair and so that's just something that again you know stay off the forums if you're not okay with that kind of stuff because it's gonna drive you crazy otherwise but anyway um, again I just want to give a huge thanks to the Mach-E forum though for you know providing so much information and so much more information than I would have had otherwise um, and the great community there that you know kept everyone in the loop and we all had each other to kind of bond over our you know misery and you know, commiserate and our uh, stresses and uh, wait times and stuff it really made it you know a little bit more bearable for sure and a lot of people do say you know it was well worth the wait for them the second they took delivery and did their first acceleration in their mach -E, you know all that stress melted away for me I don't forget so easily uh, you know it I'm going to remember the headache it was to get this vehicle, but you know, at least I'm very happy with it so far. It's been, you know, um, good here for the first 200 or so miles at least, and uh, you know, we are enjoying it a lot. But I think I would enjoy one just as much if I would have bought it off the lot and saved myself an extra, you know, six months of waiting or whatever the case was. So, um, just got to put that out there. But you know, I still think the Amaki is a great product and well worth trying to get one. Uh, I just think you can do it without some of the stress here by just hunting one down. Anyway, that's all of my thoughts here on the order for the Mach-E. Let me know your thoughts on this whole fiasco in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.